Welcome to the science behind rinseless washing. I'm Nick. I'm Ivan. And this is the DIY Detail Podcast. Ivan has been teaching the rinseless washing method for so long, and we've been getting a lot of people asking us, what makes your rinseless wash so special? Ivan, we speak regularly with the chemist. Yeah. We had a ton of feedback as we develop these products. Right. We love this stuff. I've been telling people mm -hmm. it cleans so well. You're really good at explaining the chemistry side of things. So the chemistry side of things, the DIY detail rinseless wash has a lot of emulsifiers in it. And those emulsifiers are what really break down the dirt. The other thing we have is surfactants. Now that's a little different for rinseless washes. Not a lot of rinseless washes have surfactants. They'll have emulsifiers, they'll have polymers. We have polymers as well, but we have a high load of surfactants. That makes it so that it cleans spectacularly well. Now, the emulsifiers and the surfactants do one thing though. A lot of people look for one trait in a rinseless wash, and that is that as soon as you touch that sponge to the bucket, the dirt goes to the bottom. And in our case, the dirt doesn't go down to the bottom immediately. And that's actually because of all the emulsifiers we have in it. So one that the dirt goes straight down to the bottom, not a bad thing, but it doesn't have as strong, a, strong of a concentration of emulsifiers. What we're doing is we're actually keeping what looks like dirt to our eyes in suspension. Now the heavy stuff is going to the bottom of the bucket. It's dropping down. The lighter stuff that could actually be considered more like a dye. So it's the oils, it's the other things that are on the car, the diesel soot, the exhaust uh, fumes, etc., like that they're sort of still in suspension. But because of the surfactants, because of the emulsifiers, they're encapsulated. They're not dangerous to us, and they're not dangerous to the car anymore. The most basic question folks are gonna have about a rinseless wash is, is it safe? It is, and rinseless washing, when done properly, so using the right tools, techniques, and they're not super hard to learn techniques, they're not tools that are out of this world. It's just a spectacular cleaner all around. Oh my gosh, it's the, it's not my favorite product because I take it for granted, but without it there would be nothing else. Yeah. Like it's foundational to everything that I do as a detailer. So it's the one I use the most. Right. I'm partial to ceramic gloss. We as know. the last step <laughs> protection just for the value. And yeah. For what it does, it's durability, it's pop. But let's go back to rinseless washing. So we broke down like the emulsifiers in our rinseless wash do dirt, exactly. some of the, the chemistry behind it. But you were talking about um, dropping dirt to the bottom of the bucket and, and how that's something people are used to and how ours might be a little different. Right. So basically the way we look at it and the way we design the product is a lot of the people that are using the polymer-based rinseless washes, and there's a lot of them out there, that they drop that dirt like a, like a stone, it just straight to the bottom they're very light on emulsifiers. Emulsifiers keep things in suspension. Think of mayonnaise, okay? It's an emulsification of eggs, of oil, and what's the other thing? I don't know. I don't eat mayonnaise. But anyways, there's three things in mayonnaise. Someone will tell us what's in mayonnaise. But anyways, that's an emulsification. So it all stays together. And if mayonnaise wasn't so well emulsified, you'd see it on the shelf and it would be three different layers. And there's some, let's say, cheaper detailing products on the market. There are some detailing products that they don't do the testing, they don't do all of the color separation tests and all that that we've done, and that a lot of great companies do. And you see it on the shelf and it looks like layers. That means their mixture isn't done properly and it's not emulsified. So because of all the emulsifiers, we keep a few things still in suspension. That's why the water can get to looking a little murky. But in reality, what it is keeping in suspension is completely encapsulated. It has no threat whatsoever to the, the paint. And yes, rinseless is a safer wash than traditional soap and water. What? Sa shots fired. Shot safer? <laughs> safer. The reason it's safer isn't necessarily the wash. It is what happens after the wash. When we're doing a rinseless wash, and rinseless doesn't mean you don't rinse the car before. You will do a pre-rinse. You may even get out the pressure washer. You can do all of that. But rinseless means 
you leave the solution on the surface while you're drying. And that's where most people scratch their car. They can have the safest wash routine in the world. They've got 18 buckets, 26 wash mitts, uh, foam cannon like you wouldn't believe. The car gets lost in the mountain of foam. But then they rinse all of that away. And it's when they rinse it away and they get out their drying towel that they're actually causing harm to their paint. Now we're not shooing you away no. from a foam cannon wash. We have our incredible suds, which right. we love. Just make sure you're using a drying aid that adds with some lubrication. Yeah. If you're doing a foam cannon wash where at the end when you pressure wash it all off, you're stripping the paint again. Yeah. There's nothing there besides water, which is a solvent. Yeah. Which is gonna cause some friction and increase scratch risk. Right. And we actually have two drying aids. So we have quick beads, which is designed to be used with the hose or the pressure washer. Meaning you spray it on the vehicle, it's water activated, you spray it off, then you dry the vehicle. And that is a very safe, quick, easy to use drying aid. The we other just, one- We just had somebody on, uh, on Facebook say, they've used a similar product that's been around for a while. Yeah. They do a customer's vehicle every three months and they're like, quick beads? The customer was like, that is way shinier mm -hmm. than what I'm used to. And so- right. Our technology is the latest technology. I mean, this, the chemistry behind it, this is advanced. It's not the same product that maybe you bought five, six years ago. I'm gonna spray this on and rinse it off. No. No hate or, or shade toward any other products, but people are loving Quick Beads who, yeah. who've tried it, right? We're, yeah. we're just trying to get people to try these products because they're awesome. They're awesome. And you know, our chemist is awesome as well. So We're not biased at all, by the no, way. No, he's done, but he's done a spectacular job of working with us we're detailers. We're sort of picky and OCD. <laughs> and, you know, we had going in, we're not going to sell a product that we don't like. And we're not going to sell a product just because we want another product on the shelf. We're doing this for you. We're doing this for us as well as detailers. We want to have a fun product line. We want to make detailing fun. And like I mentioned, we need a drying aid when you're using soap and water. The other one is ceramic gloss. Spray it on and then dry your surface and it gives you ceramic coating-like protection. There's ceramic in it, and it is gonna give you yeah, a couple months protection. But with the soap and water wash, you need those to have a safe, a safe wash. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit of history. Yeah. Let's open the history books and turn to page 12. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where a younger Ivan LaCroix first learned about rinseless washing. When did rinseless washing come on the market, and what were the initial reactions? So one of the first rinseless washes I tried was a product called Quick and Easy Wash. Mm. And it was in the early 80s. So it's, it was you know, early, mid 80s, somewhere in there. It's been around for a long time. I don't know if QEW is still around. I don't know if the company still exists. If they're not, RIP QEW. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're in our hearts. Yeah. You're revived in history. They're probably wildly <laughs> successful and we've never heard of them. There's right. so many brands that are so successful that like, the detailing, the casual DIYer who goes on YouTube and tries to learn how to detail that none of us know about. No. But and the longer we're in the industry, the more I'm like, well, there's a lot of people who are doing a lot of big things, businesses, people Yo. behind the scenes. Like, there's yeah. big operations that I had never heard of. Right. So, anyway. Anyways, so QEW was one of the first commercially available popular rinseless washes. And great product but I had a few little shortcomings. And like every product, as time goes on, people improve it. Whether the original manufacturer improves it or someone takes that idea and runs with it. And that's what we've done. We've taken the idea of a rinseless wash. I've been using rinseless washes for decades. And it's just, to me, a great technology, but it's one that needed a bit of help. And the polymer-based ones that are strictly polymer-based they're great products, they work, they do exactly what they're supposed to do. But when you use a wash media, let's say you use a, you use a wash mitt sometimes with the rinseless. Yeah. It gets sort of gungy and greasy feeling when you're I using mean, it. I mean, I like gungy and greasy. Yeah. No, I, I like our wash mitt. Yeah. I use it for incredible suds I, and then I, I'll rinse it out and I'll use it for- Yeah, exactly. Uh, for rinseless, but yeah, I know It'll you It'll work for the rinseless. So, we developed a foam, well, I, I've developed a lot of foam wash sponges for rinseless because it is actually the better wash media for a rinseless wash. You can use multiple towels, you can use wash mitts, you can use all sorts of different things. They all work, but the foam is the safest wash. 
and that's why we're talking about the foam as well. If you haven't followed Ivan for a while, you know, he's been in the industry for a long time and someone that I've watched a lot on YouTube, you know, coming yeah. up in the game, so to speak. Um, but we all grow, right? Exactly. And technology advances, the chemistry advances, us as humans, we evolve oh, and exactly. grow. Yeah. And I started as a mobile detail and then a shop detail and a YouTube channel and personal and professional growth, right? So here we are. Exactly. And this is our version 2, 3.0. You're a rinseless wash celebrity, so to speak, and, yeah. and but you're standing by this product. Like, yeah. it's not just here. I'm Ivan. You know, like here's the latest product that I'm I'm uh, behind. Like, th right. This yeah. is a product of you as well. Right. Exactly. So the rinseless wash was very important to us in the line, or to me specifically. Uh, Nick Incredible Suds was very important to him because he loves the foam cannon, and I'm even I'm a fan of the foam cannon as well. A lot of people don't see me that way because before DIY, I was aimed specifically at the professional detailer. And that's what my whole background was, was helping, and still is, helping professional detailers become entrepreneurs. And the soap and water, the suds, when you're doing your car in your driveway, your garage, it is amazingly fun. It is fun, you it's, have to admit that. Oh, it's okay, cool. Okay, it's, okay. you know, playing with the pressure washer, getting the suds everywhere, it is fun. As a professional, you should not be using soap. It's just Ooh. a waste of time. Literally, it's a waste of time. I will say though, coming back to product development, yeah. there were two things that I was really almost adamant about. I was like, right. these have to smell good. You know, at the pro level, even the pro level products, they understand that, you know, a compound or polish might as well smell good if you're gonna use it, right? Exactly. Like, and so at the consumer level, the DIYer, I'm like, it's got to smell good, man. This is yeah. about having fun. So all of our products have very pleasant smells, incredible suds, yeah. has the grape smell. And then I was like, if we are going to be DIY friendly, which is what we're all about, do it right. yourself, empowering you, educating you, it's like, we have to have an awesome snow foam. We have to have an awesome yeah. um, you know, foaming car wash soap. It, it has to come out of the foam cannon with shaving cream lather, and it has to clean like a mother. Yeah. And Wait, no, that's it has to clean like a what? Well, it has to clean like a, a parent. You know, <laughs> cleaning the house. I was going for like a mother something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, okay, yeah. so it has to clean <laughs> exceptionally well and I yeah. think that it does. So. It does. And you know, to Nick's foaming thing, the rinseless wash, you can actually foam it. Mm. And uh, that's something that a lot of people for years have been asking. I like the idea of a rinseless wash but I like the foam cannon and I want to foam. So having the, the high load of surfactants, the high load of uh, emulsifiers in there, we can actually make our rinseless wash foam. Circling back around. Yeah. Back to some of the comments I've seen on YouTube. What separates your rinseless wash? Is it anything special? What is the chemistry behind it? Let's, let's get focused one more time and circle it back around because I know I take us off into different yeah. <laughs> ideas and spaces right. and there's a box, and that's red. And <laughs> yeah, oh look, it's a been squirrel. It's a long day, yeah, there's exactly. a squirrel. Uh, but wrapping it back in, yeah, um, let's so, focus in and, and kind of reinforce that point. Right, so chemistry, we have polymers, provide protection, provide lubrication. We have emulsifiers that take that dirt, break it into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces, and also encapsulate as well. And we have surfactants also doing their thing to help lift that dirt off. So you can actually spray it on the surface and see it lifting the dirt off the surface and driving it down. Now, rinseless washing, safety. A lot of people are concerned about safety in rinseless washing and they confuse waterless washing with rinseless washing. And waterless washing is a completely different technology and a completely different methodology of working. A rinseless wash is closer to your traditional soap and water wash, it's just you're not rinsing it off afterwards. And maybe the tools to apply it are a little different. So a rinseless wash, if you haven't tried one, pick up a bottle of DIY rinseless wash. It's simple. There's a QR code on every one of our bottles that you hit the QR code with your phone. It takes you to the website with the SDS sheets and videos on how to use the product. One person or a couple have asked me, Nick, uh, I want to use the clay lube. Should I change the dilution? And what I've been telling them is one ounce to two gallons is our dilution for washing the vehicle that's a perfectly fine dilution for a clay loop. Do you right. have any other thoughts on that? If you want to, if you feel the need to, you can go to 128 to one or one ounce to a gallon. 
uh, for a clay dupe. It's going to give you a little more lubricity. But for us, when, or for me specifically, when I'm using the Rinsus wash as a clay lube, I'm using it in conjunction with something else. It is the foundation of the lubrication for the clay lube, but then I'm cheap and I'm lazy. I want to maximize my time. So I'm going to use an iron remover as an additional lubricant and for what it's doing as an iron remover, or I'm going to be using quick beads. Quick beads is actually a really good clay lube. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. In combination gonna... with the rinseless wash. Absolutely. Um, there's so much more to say, but I feel like we've covered some, some big ground. Yeah. The future of rinseless washing. Future of rinseless washing. It is a category that keeps growing and growing and growing. And it's something that uh, an old friend of mine once said, there's two types of people, those who use rinseless wash and those who have never tried it. That's pretty good. I thought you were going to come up with some old cliche. No. Are you sure you didn't say that to yourself? No, no. I've been told that many times. Ivan looks in the mirror. There's two types of people in this world. And you're the rinseless washer. Yeah, no. That's how you motivate yourself. In the <laughs> Not at all. Uh, but that being said, rinseless washing, once you've tried it, once you've given it a chance, because a lot of people, their first time using it, they're apprehensive. You know, they've seen it on... YouTube, they've read about it, they're not quite sure yet. Yeah, it's an intimidating process. You're like, what is this stuff? Yeah, and you've got a lot of people that, for some reason, proliferate hate about rinseless washing and were probably never even tried it. So they just, they're stuck that I'm going to stay, you know, with Ben Hur and washing his chariot with soap and water. I'm not progressing past that. We've progressed past that in so many ways. And rinseless washing is one of those ways. Absolutely. This is the DIY Detail Podcast. There's a list of DIY Detail Podcasts at the top of your screen. Ivan, always great to talk about rinseless washing with you. Yeah, and we actually have a playlist on rinseless washing as well. Oh, so we're going to do a playlist on rinseless, a playlist <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah. And you're going to see us over there. So thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave your questions below. We love answering your questions, and we answer every single one of them.